Am I the antagonist for trying to open my room door at the doctor's office? I just had an embarrassing situation happen at my doctor's office just now, and I need to know if I'm the asshole. I had a doctor's appointment today at 10 a.m. and an urgent dentist appointment at 11.30 a.m. My dentist is located about 45 minutes from where my doctor is, which is relevant to the story. It's also important to note that if you are even five minutes late for your doctor's appointment at this office, they won't see you. You have to be on time. This is common for most clinics, though. I showed up for my doctor's appointment at 9.50 a.m. I pay my copay. The medical assistant showed me back to a room, took my weight, blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature, let me know my doctor would be in shortly, and closed the door. My doctor is a good doctor and she's thorough, and sometimes she goes over on her appointments. It's not uncommon for her to show up to the room 15 or 20 minutes late. It's not ideal, but I'm aware of it and tried to plan accordingly. I waited 45 minutes for her to come in, but she never did. As I said above, I had a dentist appointment so I decided to leave. I tried to open the door, but the doorknob is broken. It turns, but the latch doesn't move. So I'm literally stuck in the room. I try the knob again, nothing. I tap on the door and no one comes. I jiggle the knob, nothing. I knock on the door, no one hears. So I try to get it to unlatch on my end by trying to push up on the knob and turn it at the same time, by trying to turn it quickly, and by trying to turn the knob while pulling the door towards me and also pushing it away from me. This made a lot of noise and somebody started yelling at me to stop from the other side of the door. They opened the door and there are four of the staff there looking at me like I'm unhinged. I apologized, said I had tried getting their attention by knocking but no one heard. All I got was, oh we heard, we all heard, that was so unnecessary. Went to the front desk to ask for a refund for the copay since I wasn't seen, and they're all still looking at me like I'm some crazy person. I don't know, it was very embarrassing. Yes, I was irritated that I waited for so long and no one came. I feel like that's a normal and natural reaction to a situation like this. And this is a known issue with that doorknob. I've been trapped in that room before, but only for a minute. It needs to be fixed or replaced. Seems like a safety issue to me on top of everything else. And not just that, it's triggering for me to be locked in a room from the outside. But was I acting crazy or yelling or pounding on the door or trying to break it down? No. I don't know what I could have done differently. Wait a few more minutes? Try knocking louder? I'm embarrassed and angry now, and I tried to talk to them when I was there, but I really had to get to my dentist appointment, and I feel like trying to go back and explain myself is just going to be weird and awkward. So yeah, was in the wrong here. You had a valid reason to leave, as you had a dentist appointment to attend and were unable to wait any longer due to the broken doorknob. Additionally, you made efforts to get the attention of the staff by knocking on the door, which they acknowledged they heard but did not respond to. The inconvenience caused by the broken doorknob and the staff's reaction to your attempts to get out of the room were beyond your control. However, it might be worth discussing the incident with the clinic to ensure the safety issue is addressed and to voice your concerns about the excessively long wait times in the future. Am I the antagonist for yelling at my boyfriend for making fun of someone in a wheelchair? My boyfriend and I have been together for years and I love him. Lately, he has been changing his speech and behavior. He left graduate school to become an electrician since it offers better pay and makes him happier. However, since joining the trade, he has become more vulgar and callous in his speech. He is meaner and makes mean-spirited jokes towards me and others. While he is overall happier, I do not like this new side of him. Anyway, this past weekend, a friend invited us over for a get-together at her home. I knew everyone there except for a few people, one of whom was a girl in a wheelchair. I learned that she had a medical condition which caused weakness in her legs. She was generally nice to us. At some point during the evening, we started discussing New Year's resolutions. She mentioned her desire to try new things and new adventures. My boyfriend then impulsively blurted out, like what, wheelchair racing? The room fell silent and she seemed hurt. Before I could apologize or say anything, he stated, what, she's in a wheelchair, it's funny. My friend asked him to leave, which he did. As I was profusely apologizing, he re-entered the room and said, Has anyone ever tipped you over? Are you like a turtle on its back needing help to get back up? This made me cry even more as I continued to apologize and insisted he leave. When I went outside, I realized he had left me. I sat on the curb crying. I have never felt so embarrassed in my life. My friend who owned the house came to me and asked what the heck was wrong with him. I replied that I didn't know. She offered for me to come back inside, but I couldn't face the rest of the party so I declined. I ordered an Uber and went home. My boyfriend was not at home. I texted him, and he responded saying he was at his friend's house having a barbecue and watching a game. I questioned him about his behavior and how he thought it was acceptable to speak to people that way. He became angry with me and told me to stop trying to create drama. He claimed that she was in a wheelchair and needed to learn to laugh about it. I informed him that I didn't want to see him that night and he didn't respond. He didn't come home until Monday morning and when he did, it was just to collect his tools for work. He ignored me, which led me to yell at him. I confided in my sister and my mom, both of whom agreed that he was out of line. However, they suggested that I may be too harsh and should apologize for getting mad at him. I am questioning whether I was the one at fault here. I just don't know anymore. Your boyfriend's behavior was completely inappropriate and disrespectful. Making hurtful jokes and mocking someone's disability is never acceptable. 
You were right to be upset and call him out on his behavior. It is important to stand up for those who are marginalized and treat all individuals with respect and empathy. Your family is correct in supporting you and recognizing your boyfriend's actions as unacceptable. You do not owe him an apology. He owes both you and the girl in the wheelchair a sincere apology for his hurtful comments. Would I be the antagonist if I ratted a girl out in my class for using ChatGPT for her work, even though it would risk her academic career? I'm going to try to keep this text concise, since it's not as significant of an issue compared to the other posts on here. I, 17-year-old female, am currently taking an AP literature class as a junior. The class is challenging and requires a lot of work, but all of the assignments serve a purpose. On the first day of school in September, my teacher assigned projects that would be due on December 1st, giving us a three-month timeline to complete them. These projects included a one-pager, an analysis assignment for a book, and an individual reading assignment. I chose to read Pride and Prejudice and completed the associated three assignments while reading it. I began working on these projects early and finished them in November. Yesterday, a new girl joined our group. Let's call her Bella, 16-year-old female. When our teacher assigned a project related to Pride and Prejudice, I discussed the project with my group and inquired about their progress on the book. Bella interjected and revealed that she hadn't even read the book. She laughed and admitted to using ChatGPT for both the book assignments and the one-pager. I had previously experienced a situation where a girl in my old group didn't contribute any work, leaving me and my friend Ella to do everything. So needless to say, I was extremely annoyed. I refused to carry the responsibility with Ella alone this time. In an attempt to find a solution, I asked Bella if she would be willing to read the book and work on the project alongside us. However, she declined and stated that she didn't want to read it. She assured us that she would find an alternative way to complete the work. I spoke to Ella about it, and while we both genuinely like Bella as a person, we agreed to inform the instructor about her usage of AI to complete the assignments, as that seems to be the only way to obtain an extension. I vented to my friend about the need to report Bella, but they became upset with me. They called me an asshole and claimed that I don't know her home life and what she has to deal with. I tried explaining my perspective, emphasizing that I also have a busy life with other honors classes, and I won't have enough time to complete a project meant for five people within the same time frame as everyone else. They reminded me that if I reported Bella, she could potentially be expelled from the class and face consequences from the school since we have a strict policy against cheating or using AI. This could also result in her being removed from her sports, extracurriculars, or other honors classes. So would I be in the wrong if I reported her? It's understandable that you feel frustrated and overwhelmed with the idea of doing all the work yourself, especially since you've had previous experiences with group members who didn't contribute. Reporting Bella's use of AI may be a necessary step to ensure that you and Ella have access to an extension and don't have to shoulder all the responsibilities. It's important to uphold academic integrity and follow the rules set by the school, and it seems like Bella knowingly cheated by using AI instead of actually reading the book. Would I be the antagonist if we get our own Airbnb for annual family vacation, making it more expensive for other relatives? My husband and I go on an annual family vacation with his mom, uncle, and sister. We have been doing this for about six years now. We always go to the same resort town and rent a three-bedroom Airbnb. We split the cost evenly per person, not per room. All the rooms are similar in size and come with a bathroom. It usually costs about $300 per person. Each individual is responsible for their own food. I understand that most people split the cost by rooms, but we have always done it this way. Last year, my sister-in-law started dating Jake and invited him along on our vacation. Because my husband's mom and uncle didn't want to share a room, we looked into renting a four-bedroom Airbnb. This way, there would be one room for each group. However, the cost per person would be around $500, which both the uncle and mom found too expensive. They have strict budgets and prefer the cost to be $300 or less. Therefore, we decided to stick with the three-bedroom option. The uncle slept on a pull-out couch in the living room while the mom took the third bedroom. The total cost was about $1,500. Each of us paid $270 except for the uncle, who paid $150 since he didn't have his own room. Mom was unhappy about this because she felt she should also pay less. We explained to her that she was still paying less for the same amount of space since she had a full bedroom. To clarify, this breakdown is per person. My husband and I paid a total of $540 for our room. My sister-in-law and her boyfriend also paid $540 for their room. Mom paid $270 for her room, and the uncle paid $150 without having a room. I hope this is clear so far. It's been a bit overwhelming to write it all out. During the vacation, things turned out messy. We couldn't use the common living space because the uncle was messy and slept in. Moreover, it turned out that my sister-in-law's boyfriend was annoying to be around in close living spaces and ate other people's food. Overall, there were many issues. Now, we are planning this year's vacation, and my husband and I would like to get a separate Airbnb because of how terrible last year was. However, my sister-in-law and her boyfriend are annoyed about this. 
They believe that we will ruin the family vacation since mom and uncle won't be able to afford it with two less people splitting the bill. They also think it will change the dynamic since we will be in different spaces, about a five-minute drive away. They want to rent a three-bedroom Airbnb again so everyone has their own room, making it $1,500 in total. Splitting per person, it would be $375 each. However, mom and uncle are upset about this, saying it goes over their budget. They just want to repeat what we did last year. My husband and I don't want a repeat of last year's disaster. We want to stick to our plan of getting a separate Airbnb and let mom, uncle, and sister-in-law with her boyfriend figure out their own plans and issues. If they can't work it out and can't go, we still plan on moving forward with our separate rental. Would we be in the wrong if we proceed with this plan? In this situation, it's understandable that you and your husband want to avoid a repeat of last year's vacation, especially given the issues that arose. It's important to prioritize your own comfort and enjoyment during the trip. You have made reasonable accommodations in the past by trying to find a larger Airbnb to accommodate everyone's preferences. But it seems like the cost became an issue for your mother-in-law and uncle. It's understandable that they have budget constraints, but it's also not fair for you and your husband to have a less enjoyable experience due to their financial concerns. Getting a separate Airbnb for yourselves is a fair solution, as it allows you to have a more peaceful and comfortable vacation. It is not your responsibility to ensure that everyone can afford it or that the dynamic remains the same. Your mother-in-law, uncle, and sister-in-law will need to figure out their own arrangements and budget if they still want to go on the vacation. Ultimately, it's your vacation too, and you deserve to have a positive experience. As long as you communicate your intentions and plans respectfully, you are not the asshole for moving forward with your separate Airbnb arrangement.